And so we're just trying to be good ambassadors, but these people want to actually stop us. And how did it start first? Well, it says the Jews. Who are the synagogues? <laughs> Anti-Semitic jump scare, everybody. He's gone through 20 minutes of his sermon, not a damn thing about the Jews. Like, you're a third of the way in, and you're introducing the villain? It, I mean, this is just bad plotting at this point. Mm. Right, we'll start a new book, like I said. It's First Thessalonians. You just... Listen to it being read. Oh, boy. And let's look at the verse. In the first verse here, it says, 1 Thessalonians 1.1, 1, 1, it says, Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ, grace be unto you and so peace I'm gonna, I'm going to skip through this a little bit because a lot of it is just boring Bible shit. Um, until he gets to talking about, like, as always, he goes on these tangents where his grievances completely overtake and overshadow anything they were actually trying to say. I, I, I watched this a couple days ago, so I'm trying to remember it all, but I'm sure it will come back to me as it happened because some of the notes I have are already insane. Like every place we go, people are, are combating us now. And it's gotten worse. Since we first came to Vancouver, things have gotten worse. The people get more base. The people get more weird. They start following us around and, you know, go, you know, Thinking you mean the people the, get the more base are from hell now. The work of these places. It's like, what business? Like, you go fix the faucet and shut up and let us do some soul in here. How about that? Why don't you go, you know, clean some carpets or something? But the maintenance people. So, like, apparently something happened when they were out soul winning, which is their, like, proselytizing, where a maintenance person must have recognized them and been like, yo, aren't you that hate church? And they're like, dog, you're blowing up my spot. Shut up. Which is very funny to me. We're turning against us also and acting like they're the managers of the, ma of the, of the place. It's like, what are you exactly trying to do here? I mean, I'm sure that all kinds of seedy things happen at these apartment complexes. I'm sure drugs are getting dealt. I'm sure people are, you know, drunken and, and doing drugs in all these places. But what are they trying to do? Trying to stop people that are actually trying to turn the world world upside down or downside up to the right way. And they That's get, not, you know, they get all high and mighty and try to kick us out and, and try to do anything they can to stop us. What are, what is a maintenance person going to do about, like, drugs getting dealt? Like, what? No, Valkyrie Astrid, they were talking about, um, they went to a, um, they went to an apartment building and got, uh, I, I don't I don't think they got kicked out, but they got told off by somebody, it sounds like. And and these things, Aaron Thompson, the other guys, a lot of the other pastors, I feel like they make shit up. Aaron Thompson, he gets mad at stuff that actually happens enough. So I feel like this did actually happen. Um gonna cause such an uproar that yes, uh, Yakari us versus place. them is a and classic cult indoctrination. You know, Paul didn't just leave after this and never come back. Paul came back. He would go back on, he went on a third journey. And some people think he went back on a fourth journey. I don't know how many journeys he actually went on, but I know he probably came back and he loved this place and he wasn't ready to just turn it over to Satan. You know, the people got saved. That's the important part. But, you know, they understand what's going on. These evil people that are trying to combat him. And like I said this before, when I talked about the church at Philippi, you know, what happens when, when things start going good for God's people, then the enemies come in and attack. This is just a theme in scripture. And especially in the New Testament where you see, it's just clear that they're trying to stop people from getting saved. You know, and our mission is to get people saved, to be ambassadors and to reach out and have God, you know, grab their, we, we just kind of help them get back together with God, right? As ambassadors in Christ, that's our job. And so we're just trying to be good ambassadors, but these people want to actually stop us. And how did it start first? Well, it says the Jews. Who are the synagogues? <laughs> Anti-Semitic jump scare, everybody. Just fucking out of nowhere. God damn. Like, that was like a verbal T-bone. Like, that just... <laughs> Let me look up that... God damn. I, I need... I've shown it on this thing before. You clockwork cookie. We'll get to that in a second. <laughs> I, already, I, already, I already have it at the timestamp. What media went to. We know I can't say that. It was a Jewish doctor. <laughs> no, I need to see the whole thing. Sorry. This is one of my favorite fucking clips, and it just reminded me of that so much. It's just like, it's just perfectly fucking. And exhaustion. Fun. 
which was misdiagnosed by a, I'm not going to say what race, what people, uh, doctor mm. and what hospital and what media went to. We know I can't say that. It was a Jewish doctor that. funny i don't know why i think it's that funny <laughs> but it's just like that it's just like like the anti-semitism is so unsubtle it's so unserious no sorry rosemary 420 i picked a call for my partner i was just we had yeah uh, we're gonna run that back just like a couple seconds um it's beyond sensitive i have weird feels about this the most un yeah 116th doc most unintentionally funny thing I've seen a bit it's like it's like an always sunny bit or something. We know I can't say that. It was a Jewish doctor. That reminded me of this like like I said it's like a it's like a verbal T bone of anti semitism like you're just you're going along your way in a car and this just comes out of fucking nowhere. Testament where you see it's just clear that they're trying to stop people from getting saved. You know, and our mission is to get people saved, to be ambassadors and to reach out and have God, you know, grab their, we, we just kind of help them get back together with God, right? As ambassadors in Christ, that's our job. And so we're just trying to be good ambassadors, but these people want to actually stop us. And how to start first? Well, it says the Jews who are the synagogue of Satan. Again, it's just like, he's gone through 20 minutes of his sermon. Not a damn thing about the Jews. Like you're a third of the way in. And you're introducing the villain? It, I mean, this is just bad plotting at this point. And why would I say the synagogue of Satan? That's the only type of meeting place that's called a synagogue. The only religion that has a synagogue is the Jews. And so God calls them the synagogue. What? Y yeah? If it was called the mosque of Satan, like, what? I, that, is such, that is such a bad... Unbelievably the dumb. And he called Jesus called them the children that the, the Jews were the children of the devil, the ones that were unbelievers that were trying to you know stop Christ and kill Christ. Look at verse seven. It says, "Whom Jason hath received, and these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar." Saying that, that wasn't again. He's he's like doing like a blanket blanket statement on all Jews. The problem is there were a lot of Jews who like didn't try and kill Jesus. There were a lot of Jews that Jesus was pretty tight with. What the fuck about them? There's another king, one Jesus. And so this is a big accusation, and he, Jesus is the king. He was the king, he is the king still today. He's the king of kings and lord of lords, but he has no direct... Oh, dead heathen. They love... They they fall back on the same shit that, like, Nick Fuentes does, where it's like, oh, no, I don't have a problem with ethnic Jews, but then they'll wall off and say some shit that is, like... Like, you're, you're not drawing comparisons between ethnic and religious Jews. Like, you're just being anti-Semitic and trying to cover your ass. Yeah, Dustin the Damned, they Direct effect do on not Caesar. You really know, when, when Pilate was before that. Pilate, you know, he said he was the king. And for this reason was he born. But, you know, his kingdom is not of this world. His kingdom is not fighting a physical battle. We are not fighting a physical battle. We're fighting a spiritual battle. But see, they don't have rules. There are no rules for them. See, we have the rules on us. We can't hit them. We can't shoot them. We can't punch them. We can't do the things that they want to do to us. And they know that. And so what? that's how they get us to try to be afraid to do what we're doing. That's how they try to get us afraid to be Christians. And that's why the Apostle Paul throughout this book is going to say, you know, hey, these afflictions are going to happen to you, but be strong. I mean, what he's saying in Acts chapter 20? He's like, you know, through much affliction, we're going to enter into the kingdom of God. So we're going to enter the kingdom of God with much affliction. But that affliction isn't from God. That affliction is from the devil and his minions and his religion is Judaism. The people in this world that are rich and stop trying to stop Christianity from behind the scenes, they don't openly do it. They got smart with that. They openly did it. But even when they killed Jesus, didn't they go to him by night? Didn't they send somebody else to do their bidding that night too? They sent the, the uh, soldiers of the, of the temple or the temple uh, guard or whatever to go get him. They didn't have the guts to do it themselves. They wouldn't. To explain what's going on here, this is one of Aaron Thompson's famous tangents where he will talk, be talking about scripture one second and then something will vaguely remind him of something he has a grievance with and then now that's just what we're talking about. Windows 95, absolutely unhinged, just laws are pretty much the only thing preventing us from shooting these people. 100%. 100%. Like, it, it is literally saying, like, no, the only thing that's stopping us is that we're good Christians and we have to obey the law, which is what, which is the the reason that we're not killing people, but they all want to kill us. It's like, have you considered not talking about how much you want to kill people?
I feel like that would remedy some of your, your uh, that would assuage some of your worries. They always do it in a sneaky way. And so Jesus, kind of, they're always trying to send people to capture Jesus. And then they come back and go, no man's big like this man's big. Like, are you fooled also? And so these guys are just wicked, evil people sending people to do their bidding. And they hire uh, the weirdest impression. and most wicked people. You know, George Soros, you know, people are like, oh, George Soros, you're gonna bring up George Soros. Yeah, the guy's evil. He supports all kinds of wickedness and he pays people to be agitators against the government and tries to push his communism. You know, isn't it funny that all the Jews are a bunch of liberals? Why is that? If they believe this book, then how are they liberals? How do they believe in abortion? How do they believe in all these different wicked things? You know why? Because they don't believe the Bible for one second. They don't, they don't really follow Moses. Because then, then they would say Leviticus 20:13. But yet the ADL on their website, what do they have? A bunch of loving idiots all over there. And just, you know, oh, just celebrating. The Jews celebrate, you know, these queers. It's wicked. And you're like, oh yeah, but they're the God's chosen people. Really? How are they God's chosen people? Please explain that to me. They're not saved. They don't believe in Jesus. They don't love Abraham. They just want to claim Abraham. They want to claim the God of the Bible. But the God of the Bible is also Jesus Christ. And they hate his guts. And he's the only way to salvation. So guess what? They're not going to get saved if they don't believe in Jesus. So these are the same tactics. So what do they do? Once all the, the, all, all the, the assault is going on and everything, then they turn their sights to turn people. Oh, you're government. very welcome. Isn't that what's right? happening verse 7? Whom I'm Jason hath is, received. Uh, and these all do contrary useful. to the decrees of Caesar. So they turn them into the government. Oh, they're not paying their taxes. Oh, they're not doing this. And they need to pay taxes because they're talking about political things. Well, you know what? Obviously, they don't think that that's true. Because Again, he goes off on. Mind you, this is a, a story about Paul establishing a church in Thessalonica. And now he is going from a tangent on George Soros spreading communism somehow and being behind Antifa to uh, the church needing to pay its taxes. Because here we are, but we pay taxes. We pay taxes on every gallon of gas we buy. We pay taxes for everything we buy at the store. We pay taxes, you know, and every, you know, the gas is what's supposed to fix the roads, but why are there so many potholes? You know, explain that with me. Because, you know what, they're pocketing that money and using it on, you know, transgender bike lanes and stuff. The Jews are pocketing tax money and using it on transgender bike lanes. The bike, you know, there's no money to go to the bikes. But yet, look at all the bike lanes. Look at Portland. It's just like a green slalom for bikes. And what do they do? They pay zero money because they're, pay, they're riding a bicycle. So, but it's helping the environment. It's saving Mother Earth. Anyway, so we come to this place. He's just getting pissed off at people riding bikes. What? Why? Who gives a fuck? To try to get, you know, they, they come to this place to try to get something started, and they're instantly opposed by the Jews or the Jew baggers, lewd fellows of the baser sort. They cause this uproar to try to turn us into the government and say that we're breaking the law. They always try to get the community to turn against us, don't they? That's why they get sit it's out there on that little corner right there. Let me tell you, it's not hard. Once people know what you're saying inside the walls of your shitty little church, Aaron, it's really not hard to get people to turn on you. You you show somebody 25 seconds of this unhinged rambling where he goes from talking about George Soros spreading communism, being a Jew bagger or whatever, to transgender bike lanes, most people are going to be like, I, you know, I kind of don't want him in my community. Like, it's really not that hard. They come in, they don't come to our church, but not everybody is, is, is down with this little clear agenda. You know, it's propagated by, it's propagated by the Jews. It really is. You know, the, the, you go back to the Jews, and this is, they're the, the bane of society. In any place that they've ever been, they've been kicked out of, and except for America, you know, they were part of the slave trade. You know, they want to talk about, they want to talk about all these white people. Well, they're white too. You know, they can't, they, you know, they, they went to Poland and, you know, magically turned into white people. So anyway, let's move. What? <laughs> Sorry. That's either the cat hair or the bullshit. Oh my God. Yeah. Hive indicator kicked out of everywhere they've been except for America. It's like, what? Like, do you remember what? Why a lot of them came to America in the last hundred years? Aaron, do you remember where they were being kicked out of in Poland? Do you remember how? Like he's straight up, like he's so close, so close to advocating like final solution shit. And he's going to sit here and say, he's going to talk about like the Jews settling in Poland and all this shit. And then... He has the nerve. This guy has been in my comment section. This man has been in my comment section telling me, how dare you call us Nazis? How dare you say we're anti-Semitic? People are going to think that we hate Jews because of your defamatory statements. I'm like, people are going to think you hate Jews because of the, the shit you say, dude. What? Come on here. Let's look at verse 8. So it says, and they troubled the people. And the rulers of the city and he's heard laughing these at that, by the so way. They he hear these things and they turn against them, right? the when they had taken security, Jews Jason and, and the other, they let them funny. go. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto to try 
Why not try? Let's try to be the best church we can be. You know, let's try to be the best husbands we can be. Let's try to be the best wives we can be. Let's try to be the best children in our families and to, and to grow up and care about the heritage of God and care about passing that heritage on to your children and their children's children. That's really what matters, right? That we keep going. It's not like that we keep going as a human race, but that we keep going as Christians in the human race. How about that? Because it doesn't take long to screw up a generation. It doesn't take long to turn into a dysfunctional family. All you have to do is just get out of church and stop going to church and stop reading your Bible and stop caring about praying, uh, praying and stop caring about the things of God and then your family it doesn't get saved. It's really simple. This is extremely rich coming from Aaron Thompson, who a couple years ago, his son was found to be engaging in, uh, let's say, some pretty awful shit in texts with the son of Stephen Anderson, sons of Stephen Anderson, where they were talking about how they would like to uh, sexually assault girls in the congregation. So I don't think this guy has much room to actually talk about dysfunctional families and accusing other people of being dysfunctional. That's the goal. I believe our church is a great influencer in this world, and, and some people might hate it, and that's fine. You, haters are gonna hate. If there's, if there's nobody hating you, then you're probably not doing a very good job. If everybody loves you like they love Billy Graham, or if everybody loves you like they love Barack Obama, you're probably not doing anything very good, are you? The queer that he was. Anyway, what? Bathhouse Barry, married to Big Mike. What? But, oh, oh, oh. So we know he watches Tucker at least, because Tucker just had that expose on uh, on Barack Obama and his definitely totally real gay lover. Uh, oh yeah, no, Clockwork Cookie, this, no, like the Big Mike thing, like that is something that Alex Jones has literally not let go for like 15 years. Like this dumbass conspiracy theory that Michelle Obama, person with two biological daughters, is a trans woman. Just because they're racist as fuck. But like, also, listen to how he goes over it. He just like, like there, there's no reason to bring this up. If everybody loves you like they love Billy Graham, or if everybody loves you like they love Barack Obama, you're probably not doing anything very good, are you? Like he's he's literally like there is no reason to bring up this weird conspiracy that Michelle Obama is a trans woman, unless it's just something that he's preoccupied with. Like no reason. What a weird the queer what a was. weird man. Anyway, bathhouse Barry married to Big Mike. Like just no reason. But Just you know, throwing it out mediocre there. people are gonna do medi mediocre things, and they're not gonna have hate. You know, obviously Barack Obama has haters, haters on the right. <laughs> but you know, we we want you know, if someone hates us, I hope that they hate us for the right reasons. I hope they hate us because we go and preach the word of God. I hope they hate us because you're gonna get the unfiltered truth from anybody that preaches from this pulpit right here. And I'm not the only one that preaches here. I'm not the only one that preaches. Yeah, Thaddeus Strange. Alex Jones thinks the Big Mike thing is the funniest thing in the world. It's so gross and childish. These dudes are so pathetic. Every time he does it, God. Because I like I do listen to a lot of uh, Knowledge Fight. It's probably one of my favorite podcasts, um, and and I feel has been inspirational in in how to really deconstruct and fact check a lot of the the rhetoric around like right wingers like this who aren't aren't operating on like a very high cognitive level, uh, honestly. But the way that Alex Jones always he goes into that like. Bleh, 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 jokey voice that he does and he's always just like bleh, Mike, bleh, Obama, bleh. and it's so fucking stupid and cringe and it's just like it's the same shit he's like literally been doing for 15 years Ugh. whom he raised from the dead even jesus which delivered us from the yeah, go to town to we're not going to see the, not the best now. choice of words gone. so this is like our first scripture here in the chap in, in the book of first thessalonians and second thessalonians Marvandor, thank you very much. Now, I'm going to... I had only planned on doing those first two. However... Hi there, my name is Aaron Thompson from Sure Foundation Baptist Church. And shut I just up. want to talk to you for a few... No. Um... They just uploaded... a part two. The overview, basically, is what I preached. The little brief introduction about the book of First Thessalonians and... Of course, it was written by the Apostle Paul, but then Timothy only five people get in on the action there. It says it was written to them by all of them, so maybe they all had their own little parts 
in it uh, to a certain extent, but of course I'm sure the Apostle Paul being the, the main authority there was uh, the writer this of most of it, but of course we just don't know. And uh, the major themes, of course, in this book are the end times and specifically the second coming of Christ is mentioned also in every shaved single chapter off. in one way. Is also the Jews seem to be kind of a little bit mentioned here huh. and there in the Antichrist. I haven't um, seen that one yet. I personally think Antichrist probably be a Jew. So, um, I don't. It's kind of runs on the same lines, but that's just my personal opinion. I mean, I can't necessarily totally prove that, but I think that there's some good scriptures that uh, might uh, sway us in that direction. But uh, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Do you Lord say Jesus. Something, something about Book the Jews? The end times, and specifically the Close second coming of Christ, is mentioned in yet. every single chapter in one way, shape, or form. And in every chapter, it seems like persecution is also the Jews seem to be kind of a little bit mentioned here and there in the Antichrist. What? There was a skip there. Okay, so he's like trying to link the Jews to the Antichrist. And. But like also two. backing it down and being like, you're supposed to know this shit, dude. You're the theologian. You're the you're the head of the church. Don't just be up here and be like, well, this is just my opinion. I think the Antichrist is going to be a Jew. I don't I don't want to I don't want to put anything out there. If you're not feeling me, I'll take it back. Like, oh, what? Are you, what is this? Own it. You're you're supposed to be leading the church, right? Don't just like tell them your your theories. Like like if you're gonna be a racist pile of garbage to everybody, suck it up and do it, dude. And in every chapter, it seems like persecution is also the Jews seem to be kind of a little bit. Yeah, that, that was a skip there. Like, am I am I going crazy here? Like, wa watch this. Because I, I noticed, here's the thing. Usually they stream, when it's a live video, they stream and it uploads on Wednesdays. So it's Wednesdays and Sundays are the days I check back. Today's not Wednesday. This uploaded pretty late for their videos. So... In every chapter, it seems like persecution is also the Jews seem to be kind yeah, of a that's bit a skip up here and there. And we'll prove that, Weird. But you know what? That might also be my my um. Let me try and see before I get too conspiratorial. Book or the end times and specifically the second coming of Christ is this by the way for everybody this is normal speed Every, everybody who's gotten used to listening to it at 1.75 this is normal like if any of you have seen the smash hit record-breaking film the flash and you were wondering what's it like when the hit titular character of the flash the flash goes in in super speed and everything slows down around him you'll probably get a pretty good idea from this mention in every single chapter in one way shape or form and in every chapter it seems like persecution is also the jews seem to be kind of a little bit mentioned here and there in the antichrist um and I personally think the Antichrist is probably going to be a Jew, so um, I don't, it's kind of, in every chapter, it seems like persecution is also, the Jews seem to be. Yeah, no, there's, there's a cut, a for sure. Here and there, and the Antichrist. Um, and <laughs> Smutty Baba Yaga so sleep. I personally think the Antichrist is probably going to be a Jew, so um, I don't, it's kind of runs on the same lines, but that's just my personal opinion. I mean, I can't necessarily totally prove that, but. Then why are you saying it? Scriptures that you why if you cannot prove something, why are you preaching it to the congregation? Like this isn't like a a a, a small opinion. Like this isn't like well, I I personally think chocolate chip is better than Rocky Road. Well, you know what? Actually, I think Thin Min is even better. Like this isn't the kind of thing that you can just throw out there and be like, that's just what I believe. Like this is this is inflammatory shit. This is inciting hatred against an ethnic group. And you're just like, no, that's just me. You. F
explains how the church got started. Got started just by a couple, some people getting saved. Okay, and of course, a big turtle. tumult where the Jews, you know, get everybody turtle turned boom. against uh, the the apostles and the other Christians that are there, and they basically assault the house of Jason, and they turn basically the whole city into an uproar, and yep. you know, they try to stop the Gentiles Tacos. and anybody else from being saved. It's just kind of what happens in the book of Acts, and a lot of people say, well, the Romans were the ones that were persecuting the Jews. And really, that's not what you see if you read the New Testament. The Romans actually helped Paul when he was getting beaten to death by the Jews and, and, and saved them. Now, I'm not saying the Romans were great characters, but at least they were better than the Jews. I mean, the Jews were trying to murder the Apostle Paul just because he was preaching about Jesus. So, um, so yeah, here, we're here years later. And you, we have, so look at verse number seven. It says, Romans, but we were gentle among you, even way, as a nurse. The guys who killed Jesus. And he's, he's saying the Romans were at least better than the Jews. He's so anti-Semitic, he's excusing the dudes that killed Jesus. I... My cat is very happy. Okay. But by that, he's, I think he's alluding back to being paid for what he's doing. And he's also talking about, he doesn't need glory from men, he doesn't need glory from anybody else. But he, you know, them being apostles could have been paid. You know, the same guy that wrote this sentence right here is the same guy that says, I wish myself to be a curse for their sake, for my kinsmen, the children, you know, the children of Israel. He wanted, he would, he would lose his salvation if he could, he said, if he could save his brethren, because that's how much he loved them. And he still kept going to them. His, his, his manner was to go into Super a city and go straight anime. to the synagogue and try to get all the Jews saved first. All the ones that were worthy of salvation, all the ones that would just forsake, you know, the rabbinical Ju Judaism that they've been being taught for about 400 years and forsake that stuff and get on the right program, get back on God's yeah. program. But it says they killed Carl. Like, oh, the Jews like... didn't kill Jesus. What's the Bible say right there? Who both look look at the look at the last three. I feel like that is a lot. Like I hate it, it's kind of a cringe thing to say, but it is. It's like a Christian cope. Like it is like go there in heaven now. They're not suffering. Which like there is something to be said for you know somebody who's at the end of life if they if they have dementia or if they are in a lot of pain. Like I I have seen people like that who it's like okay like you are you are sad to see them go, but you are happy that they're not suffering anymore that you don't have to deal with that and then that extends to even like like i've had that with like pets and stuff where it's like yeah it's it's yeah yeah end of suffering remember yeah three words in verse 14, it says, of the Jews who both killed the Lord Jesus. Who killed the Lord Jesus? The Jews did. Now, I will say this. Okay, that, first off, again, and I feel like you need to preface literally everything these guys say by being like, you think this one collection of books, this one translation over thousands of years is the definitive one that is spoken from the word of God, which is weird and worth questioning. But more than that, the wording on that is literally saying of the Jews that killed Jesus. It's not saying all the Jews killed Jesus. That is talking about specifically the Jews in relation to who killed Jesus. Like the Pharisees who were responsible for turning Jesus over to Pilate. That's not all Jews. That's the Jews that killed Jesus. It's not all of them. You... Daddy is strange. I appreciate it. Thank you so so much. Oh no, you're you're totally fine, Yukaro. Every single one of us in here killed Jesus in the way that we he had to die for all of our sins, and so we put him on the cross. When you think about it, also, but we didn't actually drive the nails in. But you know what? The Jews didn't either. But they got somebody else to do their dirty work, and this is the system that they use to this day is that they use their influence in this world to harm Christianity. They what hate the God. They hate the Lord. He's still admitting that the Jews didn't do it. <clears throat> but even then, he's like, but th that's why the Jews are still evil today. What the fuck, dude? Oh. Because look, the Bible says, if you don't have the son, you don't have the father. They say they believe in the father, but they really don't. They say that they follow Moses, and they really don't. They say, we trusted Moses. No, you don't. Because if you trusted in Moses, you know, you would, you would, you know he, he wrote of me, so why don't you believe in me? I mean, just multiple times in the Bible, it's just challenging these Pharisees. They're, they're, they're saying that they believe in God, but they really don't. And that's how Jews are today. 
They're secular Jews. I don't understand how that works, really. They say they're Jews. They don't go to synagogue. You know, some of these guys just have, they probably just do some fake Passover every year at their house, if they even do that, but they call themselves Jews. That's how they can be liberal. That's how they can, you know, stand for, uh, for abortion and say that they love homos. I mean, how can you say that if, if, you know? It's so funny. The way they use the word homos is so funny to me because it's the most, like, 12-year-old in 2004 trying to be offensive, like, oh, you're a homo. It's like, it's so, it's just so goofy and childish. That's very funny. And I mentioned this last week, but Moses wrote Leviticus 2013. Do you follow Moses? No. The new IFB, bad. They talk about homos and say that they're bad. It's like, what are you talking about? I thought you were a Jew. But they're not a Jew on the inside. They're not circumcised in the heart like the Bible says you're supposed to. <laughs> You got to get that. <laughs> They're not circumcised in the heart. You got to get that um, aortic foreskin clipped, bro. To be in the New Testament, the old way was the circumcision of the flesh, but we are supposed to be circumcised in heart. This is the New Testament. And so they killed the Lord Jesus. That's what the Bible says. And their own prophets. And Jesus was ripping on them for that. He's like, which, you know, you, kill, you killed your, the prophets and now you're washing their graves. <laughs> you know, he's like, wa they're wa like whitening their tombstones or whatever. They're the ones that killed the prophets. Their, their fathers are the ones that killed the prophets in the first place. It says, and have persecuted us. So they killed Jesus. They killed their own prophets. And now they're persecuting the apostle Paul and the movement of Christianity. And it says that they please not God. Please tell me if they please not God, how are they God's chosen people? Explain that to me. Again, we're, we're just going off on these wild ass tangents and he cannot stop thinking about the Jews. It's like they're, oh, but they're still God's chosen people. You know, we got to pay, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. That Jerusalem over there is not a spiritual Jerusalem. Yeah, Jerusalem this is over there no true Scotsman. Is full of dead man's bones. That place over there, you know, it's funny. They want to, they, you know, the ADL. You know, we'll start talking about them again. Yeah, no, please do. You can tell he's absolutely not mad that the ADL and the Anti Defamation League and the Southern Poverty Law Center are all really uh, calling attention to his dumbass church. You definitely not. ADL, the Anti-Defamation League, they got they get all mad about, you know, people saying stuff about the border walls and how all the immigrants are coming in at record levels and stuff, but they won't let people into their own borders. They're not. And why not? Why do they build these high walls and keep the Palestinians out of there? Jim Moneymaker, thank you very much for joining. Anti-Defamation League, uh based in New York. Across the country in a global presence. Jewish, international Jewish non-governmental organization based in the United States. It, it is not based in Israel. What? Uh, so weird. Jim Moneymaker, we are talking about uh, anti-Semitism from this chuckle fuck right here. Because they just want to keep their, their, their place pure. You know, and they do it because they're not real, necessarily children of Abraham. You can't use your DNA to go over to Jerusalem and say, look, here's my lineage. 1% Jew right here. You can't do that. You have to renounce Christianity if you want to immigrate to Israel. Fact. You have to. And so anybody that's a missionary over there, I don't understand how they get around filling out that form and why God never blesses those missionaries that go over there. You know, got one Jew saved this year. <sighs> Mazel Tov or whatever. You know, I don't know. They, they get all excited. But, you know, I mean, that's, a, just, that's obviously someone's got to go there. But, you know, go there on, like a, on a sightseeing tour and get some people saved or something. But if you think you're going to thrive in a place that hates Jesus, it's not going to happen, folks. It's not going to happen. You're not going to build a great church there because they are the synagogue of Satan, according to the Bible. So they're just like their father, their real father. Their real spiritual father is the devil. Jesus said that to them, plain as day. He said, ye are of your father, the devil. So he called them out in front of everybody. Understand? Said, your father is not end? my father, because if you, love, if you love my father, then you'd love me. Oh, okay. And they hated him. So they're not of God. So how are they like their father? How are, how are they like their father? Well, Satan orchestrated the Lord. I don't know if you guys can see this, but the cat is making biscuits on my leg right now. Jesus Christ's death through the Jews, right? I mean, didn't the devil try to tempt Jesus and get him to fall? And when he couldn't do that, then he just, you know, the Jews were, you know, they were already after him pretty much. But if they're his, if, if he's their father, then they're his children and they're going to do the bidding that their father tells them to do. And so they killed the Lord Jesus and, in, and, and Satan moved them to kill their own prophets. You know, in the Old Testament, they literally stopped worshiping he's God and started worshiping like who? Huh? Baal. And who's Baal? He's Satan. They literally worship the devil. 
he is just and bouncing God would back and forth. This is so house with, again, if you don't if you don't know all this stuff, like this is not a good sermon to listen to because it doesn't tell you anything. He's just bouncing around like a ping pong. Jim Moneymaker, why do we have to talk about the Jews? Because uh, this they pastor's talking about the devil, them. Baal, they killed their own prophets. And Satan also moves the Jews to hate and persecute Christians today. But uh, Jews are contrary to all men, just like their daddy. So Revelation 2, 12, or 12, 12 says, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. So here's the thing, is that the Jews are contrary to all men, and so is the devil. He... That, that verse said, what did that have to do with the Jews? Why are you bringing it up again, dude? Like, you're just... He can't help himself. He's he's pilling himself. Well, you know, they, they do this predatory lending in every nation they've ever come across. England kicked them out for clipping coins. You know, they were clipping coins, and then th they just got kicked out, and they hung, like, I don't know, a lot of them. <laughs> and they kicked them out. And then Spain was like... Again, laughing at England just hanging a lot of them. A lot of them. Just hanging Jews. And he wants to tell me, he wa this man wants to say to me, that he's not a Nazi. That his, his church doesn't espouse any Nazi-adjacent beliefs. As he's sitting up here laughing about Jews hanging. Like, yeah, we'll take them, we'll take them. And then they did the same thing in Spain. And like, Spain's like, okay, well, you, you're going away too. Holland, you can have them. And Holland's like, yeah, we'll take them. Amsterdam, oh, yeah. So, and then New York was called what before it was New York? Anybody know? New Amsterdam. <laughs> that's where they went and that's where they've stayed. You know, I mean, there's, there's a lot of places in this country where there's a lot of Jews, but there's none like New York. Jew York, right? So, but anyway, what, the, the point I was trying to make with Hebrew, uh, Revelation 12, 12 is that, that Satan, when Satan falls, it says, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. So it's not just, you know, God's people that he wants to kill. He wants to kill everybody. He hates everybody. He's contrary to all men. And his children are just like him. The Jews are just like them. And so now they're really covert and they're dug in. And, uh, people don't realize, but, you know, people are starting to wake up to it. And, you know, they'll go sea and land to make one proselyte. Like, and a proselyte is someone that's, you know, you've converted. So we make proselytes too, people that we convert to Christianity. But... They, they make them more, more the child, two more, twofold more the child of hell than they are themselves. So what's he saying? They're children of hell. <laughs> so now, oh, know, yeah, the, the ADL, either. and I, I think 100%. I posted the ADL. Last week I talked about the ADL, and I, I put uh, the article against the new IFB. Did anybody get a chance to read that? Yeah. So basically, they, they mention that we do soul winning, and they put little quotation marks by that. But see, they don't want us to reach the Gentiles either. They want to shut us down. And on social media... I was talking about this last week, but I wanted to talk a little bit more about it tonight. It says, social media has enabled, that this is a, a, an article from the EDL. It says, has enabled the new IFB movement to reach hundreds of thousands, if not millions. Yep, here we go. Hundreds of thousands, if not millions. So he's already misquoting it. Millions, thanks to a tech-savvy strategy that includes daily viewership. Um, Are you asking me? Am I in the weird tanky video essayist sphere? N no. I... I don't think I'm in any tanky spheres. I hope I'm not. Daily viewership, video and audio content posted to numerous channels and platforms. New IFB pastors boast of their ability to outsmart technology companies, efforts to deplatform their hate speech by constantly re-uploading content to new channels. Now, so like, yeah, that's what we have done because they're st trying to stop us from getting the gospel out. See, they fill up their sin always. They, they, want, they want us to stop reaching people you know, when someone bans your speech like that in a country like America where we're supposed to have free speech, you should really pay attention. When you aren't even allowed to question the Holocaust or you'll go to jail in Europe, you should question why they have that law. You know what? Gee, Aaron, I wonder why they would have a law in Europe about questioning the Holocaust. Because of what happened last time, people in Europe were questioning the Jews and how that led to the Holocaust. I, mm, Fart and Mason Jar, thank you for following, I, I think. Just like, I, I appreciate that. Thank you, Dead Heathen. I'm just asking questions. Oh, man. They have that law, and like, here it comes. You know, Pastor Thompson's, uh, you know, Holocaust denier. No, I'm just saying that the, the numbers don't add up. They don't. <laughs> literally, literally, Yakaru. He's literally like, I'm just saying.
I'm just asking questions. The numbers don't add up. Tell me, tell me about how many people fit in ovens next, Aaron. Give me, give me some real bottom of the barrel Nick Fuentes shit. Don't add up. Like, there's no way you could cremate that many bodies in the time that they said you could. You just, it's impossible. So, I don't miss. Do, or, go back and listen though. Go back and listen real, real quick. Wait for when he sa he's when he says the thing about how many bodies you can cremate. Listen in the background for what somebody in the congregation says. Pay attention. When you aren't even allowed to question the Holocaust or you'll go to jail in Europe, you should question why they have that law. You know why they have that law? And like, here it comes, you know, Pastor Thompson's, uh, you know, Holocaust denier. No, I'm just saying that the, the numbers don't add up. They don't add up. Like, there's no way you could cremate that many bodies in the time that they said you could. You just, it's impossible. So why are you not allowed to question the Holocaust? There are people in the audience going, yep, that's right. It sounds like somebody says, that's right, bro. Like, that's, that's what I'm hearing. Either way, I hear that's right. Like, people are in his audience. This isn't, this isn't like, new to them. Like, this is the shit they already believe. They're like, yeah, of course, naturally. It doesn't make sense. How could, how could so many people be packed in and burned? The absolute state of, of American conservative Christofascism. because there's obviously something that they're covering up, right? And they did truly try to give the Jews to other nations. Nobody wanted them. They put them, a bunch of them in a boat and took them to America. This is a fact of history. And Roosevelt said no and sent them back. So, and I'm not saying that, you know, they were treated well or anything like that. I'm not saying nobody died. But the fact is that when you have to hide the truth from people or you have to censor what the truth is and it's against the law to say or question something, then that is when people should be like, oh, well, you know, there's a reason why they don't want us to question this because there's probably some truth to the matter. Could it be, Aaron, because people like you are laughing and joking about Jews dying? Could it be because people like you espouse shit that led to Jews being rounded up in concentration camps and murdered? You absolute imbecile. You weird, fridge-shaped, balding doorknob of a human. It's just so... It's just so stupid. He's just so dumb. But it's the same thing with censorship online. The World Wide Web is the... I, I need a seatbelt because I'm going to get whiplash from this shit. Like, Holocaust denial to... Actually, it's the exact same thing when you get censored online. Biggest way to reach people in the world. It really is. But these scumbags want to stop us from doing that. Here's what it also says. The new IFB's expansive digital footprint is coupled with a strong emphasis on its on-the-ground, soul-winning efforts to attract people to the movement. As well as the establishment of new churches around the world, the majority of churches which are currently affiliated with the new IFB movement were founded in the last five years. Uh -huh. So they ban us on social media. They, they throttle down and shadow ban our presence on the internet. And if you don't believe me, it's just like, yeah, we're able to exist right now on YouTube, maybe not after not tonight, but... We're able to exist on YouTube to a certain extent and on other social media platforms, but before they start messing with the algorithm and shadow banning us on all of our channels and deleting other people's channels as they built them up, you know, we were reaching millions of people. They have never reached millions of people. Maybe across all of their different churches and all of the different platforms, possibly, or when they go viral for being massive pieces of shit and they reach millions of people who look and see what absolute idiots they are like maybe then they've reached millions of people rigmo thank you very much for joining but aside from that they they're the channel look like 902 subscribers you're not pulling dude you're not moving not like that like they they also use the word like shadow ban i don't think they know what it means and I don't, I think so many people don't know what it means. Uh, Rosemary420, oh, you weren't following. Thank you for following. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, your car, not to mention the hate speech. Yeah, maybe not tonight because we admitted to ban evasion. Looks like a Mr. Potato Head. That's not far out. Millions of turds flying out of his mouth. Ugh. And people are joining the movement on a massive scale, and they stopped that. You know who stopped it? This scumbag organization called the Anti-Defamation League. A bunch of...
people that say they don't like defamation, but they defame us in every single uh, thing that they say in, in their article. Now this again, this is not defamatory. What you're saying, like like what they're saying, this is like all factual, like ideology. Please, please. Oh my God, Aaron, go over your ideology section. Part has been true to the point so far. I mean, they're giving us credit where credits due. But let me just sh uh, tell you what shadow ban means. Shadow ban means to block from a social media site or online forum without their knowledge, typically by making their posts and comments no longer visible to others. Twitter does this too. I just got one because I said that, why does Cement love Tranny so much? And then they, they shadow ban me for it. They told me they were doing it. At least they told me this time. But have you ever noticed like anything I post on there on Twitter, they put like a little thing over the front of it says this has harmful content in it. They do it to pass. That's not shadow banning, by the way. To Shelly, he's not even allowed to be on Facebook at all. That's a, that's a content warning. Like, the p porn stars who post to Twitter get shadow banned. Or don't get shadow banned. They have content warnings. Like, content warning and shadow banning are not the same thing. You ignoramus. But, and, and then, like, the ADL did this investigation on Pastor Mejia and Pastor Jimenez. And, and I, I just found the page tonight. If, if they're... Buddy, you have this page pulled up, Aaron. If they're defaming you, and you said it was all accurate to hear, I'm assuming that this part is what you take umbrage with. Why don't you go over uh, what they're defaming you with? Please, please. Because right here they're saying that you don't make any effort to hide your bigotry. You openly promote extreme hateful rhetoric and when challenged, double down. The most common forms of bigotry incorporated into new IFB teachings include anti-LGBTQ bigotry, anti-Semitism, anti-Zionism, misogyny, and more. All of that's true. It's not defamatory. Why aren't you uh, taking issue with that? In recent months, pastors affiliated with this virulently anti-Semitic and anti-LGBTQ plus HIV. Virulently. Aaron, virulently. Buddy. J.K.L. P. New independent fundamental Baptist, new IFP movement have taken advantage. All right, let's, let's hear that. Let's hear, hear that joke one more time. Because again, he just can't, he can't stop it with the, like brain worms. 22. But it says, following the ADL's investigation, YouTube terminated both the First Works Baptist Church and Verity Baptist Ch Church channels. In recent months, pastors affiliated with this virulently anti-Semitic and anti-LGBTQ plus HIV, JKL P, new independent fundamental Baptist, new IFB movement have taken advantage of YouTube shorts, significantly expanding the reach of their hateful content using this relatively new social media tool some new IFB pastors have increased the average viewership on their channels by tens and even hundreds of thousands of views per video. So Pastor Mejia found the loophole and Pastor Jimenez were just like just uploading all this content. It was great. But the ADL got them zapped. They got them, their channels deleted. And they, it's, not, it's not because Pastor Jimenez was putting anything on. He was very careful on what he put on there. But YouTube shorts introduced by the platform in 2021 are limited in the length of 60 seconds and are de designed to be created and viewed on smartphones. More closely resembling TikTok videos and, and than traditional YouTube videos, a recent review of new IFB affiliated YouTube channels in 2022 found that many uh, churches are supplementing their traditional weekly sermon videos with shorts uploaded. And some of the movement's most prominent pastors finding significant success using YouTube shorts to expand the reach or promote explicitly bigoted views, including anti-LGBTQ plus content. Pastor Bruce Mejia, First Works Baptist Church in California was one of the first new IFB pastors to begin using this, the YouTube shorts in April, 2021. In addition to driving increased viewership, short. Shorts posted to the First Works Baptist Church channel also receive far greater engagement than traditional videos. Honestly, Clockwork Cookie, it's it's debatable. It, you know, it's it's contentious if he actually understands the... Yeah, no, Dead Heathen, the sad little LMNOP, he was just forced to add it. Like, it's it's compulsive for him. He can't. It, it just all... <laughs> Fart Mason Jar. Is he, is he out of breath just standing there? Yeah. Yeah. I think he is. So, and this is the ADL. This is the Anti-Defamation League. It's a Jewish organization. And what are they trying to do? They're trying to stop the gospel from going out. Does he think that YouTube, like the ADL did this study. Does he think that YouTube are the ones like are controlled by the ADL? I mean, he probably does. He literally probably does. Hey, leave Miss alone. Yeah, the ADL runs the YouTube. Like out to the ends of the world. They're trying to stop Bible preaching from going to the ends of the earth. And so the wrath of God is upon this place to, to the uttermost. So, you know, do you think it's an accident that he's just talking about how bad the Jews are and how they're, you know, they're, 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 you know, they're, the wrath of God is on them to the uttermost. And then all of a sudden he just is like, we, we would have came to you, but Satan hindered us. Do you think he was like tongue in cheek in that? Do you think he's just, you know, he's just, a, it's hyperbole. 
It wasn't really Satan, we just got hindered somehow. No, I believe he's literally saying that Satan hindered us. Because Satan and the Jews are on the same team. And the Jews were the ones that Satan sent after Paul to stop him, to stop the things he was doing in these places. And so, is what I've been saying an anti-Semitic rant? It's the Bible, folks. It's what the Bible says. I mean, I read to you the verses of the Bible. They is, was, it, was it parts of the Bible when you said Jew York? Was, was that from the Bible when you were talking and laughing about how Jews were hung as they were thrown out of Britain? Was it, was it parts of the Bible when you were questioning the Holocaust and inferring that the ADL was trying to target you specifically? All of that, that's, that's in the Bible. That's not an anti-Semitic rant. That's in the Bible. You, if you're going to spew such bullshit, don't make it so easy to pick apart, Aaron. Like, you are so painfully ignorant and so incredibly thin-skinned. And yet, you don't take any effort to defend yourself against obvious criticism by just, like, being smarter about it. Like, you, you want to know why you're targeted so much? It's because you're a dumbass, dude. It's because you'll say things like, oh, it's all in the Bible, after going on an anti-Semitic screed. And as we saw, even in the last sermon, how you talk about how George Soros is, is spreading communism and he controls Antifa or whatever. Unbelievable, dude.